Hi, welcome to Patrick's Tech Show. I'm Patrick John. Today we have a PlayStation 5 controller, model number ZCT1W. We're gonna go over all the steps to take if your buttons don't work. <clears throat> Let's open this bad boy up and teach it some manners. First take something thin and flat and pry off this black part of the casing. Next pop off the R1 and L1 triggers. And looky here, there are two screws hiding under R1 and L1, and two hiding under the black casing. <laughs> Remove them. This is broken and missing from this controller, but there should be two little pieces here that you have to lift off of these tabs in order to work the bottom of the controller open. These rear triggers will make it difficult to pull the casing away, so I recommend pushing down on them while pulling the casing off. Remove the battery. Remove the screw holding on the battery case. Carefully remove this microphone cable from its holding slot. I also recommend removing the other end of the microphone cable out of the circuit board and putting it aside for safety's sake. Remove the battery case. Remove all the cables going to the circuit board. I like to push on the thumb pads to help pop that circuit board out. These wires are still attached from the rumble motors, so you can either desolder them or just flip the circuit board down carefully. Okay, all the buttons go to these contacts on this ribbon cable here. And when it's properly assembled, they should line up perfectly with these contacts on this circuit board here. Sometimes if a controller is dropped or thrown, things can come misaligned. And all you have to do is put it back together and it'll start working properly. Or maybe something got into your controller and these contact points need cleaned. See if you can lightly scrape away any residue and then you can rub away at those contacts with rubbing alcohol. After cleaning and reassembling, is your controller working? If not, don't freak out. I've got more ideas where that idea came from. Remove these two Phillips screws on this white piece. Remove this white piece. Remove this clear plastic piece. And remove these two screws above the rumble motors. Now you can remove this entire assembly out of the casing. When you play a game and push a button, it's supposed to touch the corresponding contact points on the conductive film. Make sure that all the buttons are there and that nothing is obviously torn or broken. If there is something obviously wrong, Google search and order a PS5 button kit or button pads. If you previous, if you reassembled your PS5 controller and the buttons look good, but the buttons still aren't working, then the problem probably has to do with your conductive film. If you're feeling thorough, you could lightly clean the conductive film's contact points with alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and reassemble it to see if it works. I'm going to Google search PS5 controller conductive film and replace it. Now that we've done so much and reached a stopping point, well, I don't know about you, but I think it's time for a snack break. And today's snack is rolled up bologna with peanut butter inside. And that was made with homemade peanut butter and Godfrey's Sweet Lebanon Bologna, made in Loganville, Pennsylvania. It is now the future, and the new conductive film has arrived. Let's remove the old one. Carefully pop it off the plastic tabs. 
slide it off the plastic tabs in the back, and remove the conductive film. Let's take the new conductive film and do everything in reverse. Slide the contacts that go to the buttons into this slot, and then push the conductive film over these plastic tabs to lock it into place. Put the button contacts back over its tabs. Put the assembly back in its housing. Make sure this ribbon cable with the blue top here goes through the assembly and through its slot. Next, put this little plastic clear piece that looks like angel wings right there. Next, take this white plastic piece and put it right here in its slot above the clear piece. Put the two silver screws back into this white plastic piece. Next, put the screws back into their holes above the rumble motors. Put the circuit board back into its housing. Make sure this little ribbon cable that goes to the one microphone didn't get pinched under the board. And put that back. Put all the cables back into place. Put the battery case back on. Put the screw back into the battery case. Put the ribbon cable to the rear microphone back in. Put the microphone back into its slot at the bottom of the battery case. Plug the battery back in. Put the back half of the housing on. Put the screws back in place and at the bottom. Put the screws back into place at the top. Pop the R1 and L1 triggers back into place. Put this black piece back on. The controller is now completely reassembled! Did you have a broken controller? If so, which step did you need to take to fix it? Put it in the comment section of the video! Thanks for watching, I hope you learned something, and now if you want, you can watch balloons fly around in slow motion.